What is going on guys, it is Steven, your semi-comprehensive guide here, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to connect your PlayStation 5 controller to your Windows 10 PC. Now, there are a few different ways we can connect our DualSense controller. The first is using a USB-C cable, and the second method is wirelessly using Bluetooth. So, each method has its pros and cons, and I'll be showing both methods in today's video, so if you're looking for a specific way to connect your controller, skip ahead to one of the timestamps on the screen right now, and that'll take you directly to your method of choice. So let's get started with the cable method. This is by far the easiest method to connect our DualSense controller to our PC, and it works with the most applications. Uh, I have not found a game yet that does not work with the DualSense controller when it is connected via a USB-C cable, so this method works the best and it is the easiest to use. So you're going to need a USB-C cable in order for this to work, so hopefully you still have the one that came with your PlayStation 5 or with your controller, and you can just use that cable preferably, but any USB-C cable will work. It doesn't matter if it is USB-C to USB-A or USB-C to USB-C, as long as it can connect to your computer and it allows for a data pass-through, it will work with your DualSense controller. So let's get started by plugging in the USB-C end into our controller and the other end into our PC. And right away, our controller should light up as if it is charging. Then the color will change to a blue color as if it is connected to the PlayStation. Then if you have an application like Steam installed, it will light up in a Steam blue color. And then if you have a custom color set on Steam, it'll then light up in that color. So mine went from orange to blue to light blue to red because that is my custom color. But for you, it might just light up in the PlayStation Blue. As long as it is showing some color other than orange, that means it is connected to your computer and it is working with it. So from here we can go to our game or application of choice. So since I'm assuming most of us have Steam installed and are going to use this controller with Steam, I'm going to show Steam first. So I'm just going to open it up here. And you may have noticed down there in the bottom left corner, it let me know that the controller did connect to the computer and it was recognized by Steam. So that means that it will work with this application. You might also see a message when you open up Steam that's asking you to uh, put it into big picture mode so it'll work better with the controller. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to just press this button up here and that will take me right into Steam's big picture mode and using the controller I can navigate through all these menus just fine. So before I go into a game to demonstrate I'm going to head up to the settings to change just a few things. So I'm going to go down to controller settings and we have a bunch of options here and really the only one that matters for this video is the PlayStation configuration support, you're going to want to have that enabled. Uh, the controller will most likely still work even with this disabled, but it works best with this feature enabled. So I'm going to leave that checked. And then all the way down here, we can see that Steam does detect our DualSense controller. It shows up as the PlayStation 5 controller. And in here, we can just be sure that we have the right controller by identifying it here. It'll vibrate for us. We can calibrate it. So if the uh, control sticks are off in any way, we can change that. Uh, and then up here at the top, we can change our preferences. So we can change the name, the rumble. Uh, this is really cool here. We can change the light color. So if you want to have a custom color for your controller while you're playing on your computer, you can set that right here. You can also set the brightness of that light as well as the saturations. I'm going to set it back to the original preset here. And this all looks good to me. I don't need to change it to any fancy name or anything. I'm just going to press submit and all my settings have been changed. You'll see there it recognizes it once again. And it is saying that my user configuration is being used right now. We can change what user we use with this controller right here with registered accounts. I only have one registered account with Steam right now, so this is the only option that appears for me. But for you, it might show multiple accounts if you have different accounts on your Steam application. So that about does it for this section. So we can head out all the way to our library. And I'm just going to quickly demonstrate using the controller with a game uh, I'm going to use Rocket League for this video. All right, so Rocket League has loaded, and I can just press any button here, and it works just fine in-game. You'll notice that if I press play here, that the button prompts over there on the left still appear as if they were the DualShock button prompts, so they're still colored like the old controller. But all these buttons still match up to what is on our controller. They're just different colors. Everything works just fine. All the buttons match up on screen and we can just jump in a game if we wanted to and we would play with our default button layout just like if we were on a PlayStation 5. So I'm gonna go back out of this 
right here. And I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate how to use this controller with a different application other than Steam. So like I said, most likely you're using this with Steam. This is the best application to use this with. But if you're using something like Xbox Game Pass or EA Play or some other application on your PC, then you might want to use this controller with that as well. So I'm just going to use Madden 20 for today's video because this is the only non-Steam game I have available on my computer right now. And I'm just going to quickly show you how this controller works with a third-party application. So you'll notice first off on the main screen here that all the button prompts are for Xbox. That is because pretty much any PC game that is not on Steam uses those as its default button prompts. It assumes you're using an Xbox controller because you're using Windows and it just gives you those. But navigating through and selecting options is exactly the same. The X button lets you enter into something. The circle button lets you go back. The square button and the triangle button each do their own thing. And keep in mind, each game and each application is different. Uh, it may not even work, even though there is controller compatibility. For example, I have Battlefront installed, and that does not work with the controller for some reason, even though it is on console. So it really depends on the game and what compatibility you have with the controller. So keep in mind, it's not perfect. Outside of Steam, none of these games are guaranteed to work with the DualSense controller. So that about does it for the cable method. If you're having any issues connecting, be sure that your cable does support a data pass-through. Like I said earlier, if it is just a power cable, it will not work. Most USB-C cables are data, but some of them are just power only so keep that in mind other than that um be sure your controller is powered on be sure the usb c or usb a port on your computer is a newer version be sure your computer is up to date be sure your controller is up to date and everything should work just fine obviously the dual sense controller and the ps5 itself they're both new so steam and other third-party applications are still getting used to the new controller uh firmware and all the button layouts and everything so not everything will be uh as smooth right now as it will be maybe a year from now so it may take a little while for everything to update but right now it works just fine with steam and it is compatible with some other applications all right so now on to the second method the bluetooth method this is the preferred method because you don't have to worry about any cables hanging from your controller you don't have to worry about free usb port so it's really nice and it is pretty easy to connect our controller to our computer so let's start off by actually putting our controller into pairing mode if we just hold down the playstation button and the create button for about five to seven seconds and then the controller will go into pairing mode you'll see it has the uh, flashing lights letting us know it is ready to connect so now on our computer side we can go to settings and we can go to devices and then Bluetooth and other devices, and we can just press add Bluetooth or other device. Select Bluetooth, and the controller should appear right away. Just press on it, just select it, and it will connect almost instantly, which is great. The DualShock 4 did have some issues connecting, so it's great to see that the DualSense connects right away. Just press done, and we can exit out of here. And now our controller is connected. You'll see that it is uh, lit up, hopefully. If it has connected properly, it'll have the uh, either the blue PlayStation light or the custom light color you've set on Steam. You may have noticed in the bottom right corner that Steam did give us a notification letting us know that it recognized the controller, so that's great. So let's start with Steam because that is most likely the application you will be using with this controller. I'm just going to open up Steam, and Steam always wants us to use the controller in big picture mode, so I will do that to make Steam happy. And once we're in here, we can navigate through all the menus just as if this controller were connected via a cable. So before I demonstrate how to use the controller in a game, I'm just gonna go up to settings and configure a few things. So first off, be sure that PlayStation configuration support is enabled. Uh, you could still use the controller without this checked off, but it is preferable that you have it enabled. Uh, and then down here, we can see that Steam does detect our PlayStation 5 controller in here. We can't identify it to be sure we're using the right one. Calibrate it if the control sticks are off in any way. You can change the registered account. I only have one, so this is the only option for me. You might see multiple accounts here. So be sure that your account is registered with this controller, otherwise it will not work. Uh, and then up here, we can change a few preferences for the controller. We can change the name, the rumble, we can change the light color and we can change the brightness of the light and the light saturation so if we want an all white light we can do it all the way up to full saturation and you'll just see the white light around our controller then we can exit out of here submit and 
you'll see that it has now updated our configuration to our liking. So we can go back out of here all the way to our library. And you'll notice that Steam has updated their button prompts for the Dual Sense. They're all white button prompts down there instead of the uh, multicolored like the Dual Shock controller. So it's nice to see that Steam has updated their software and they are fully compatible with the DualSense controller. Obviously it depends on the game you're using as to how well it'll work with the controller. So I'm just gonna demonstrate with Rocket League because uh, this is the most controller friendly game I have. All right, so now that Rocket League is open, you can see that I can navigate through all of these menus with my DualSense controller. If I uh, go into the play option here, you'll see that the button prompts still appear as the old DualShock 4 button prompts. That's just fine though, they all still work. Uh, Rocket League has not uh, updated their game, they're not even on PlayStation 5, so everything still appears as the old DualShock 4 prompts, but uh, that won't affect our gameplay at all. Everything else is still matched up correctly, and it works just fine. So I'm going to exit out of here. Now I know not everybody uses Steam to play their games on PC, I know a lot of people use Xbox Game Pass and EA Play and Battle.net for their video games as well. And unfortunately for you, this method does not work as well with those applications as it does with Steam. I have EA Play installed on my PC and the DualSense when it's connected via Bluetooth does not work with any of the games I have installed. Uh, I, it doesn't work with any of my Game Pass games either. So if you're using Bluetooth for the DualSense controller, it's really best to just keep with Steam because they're really the only ones that have made the controller compatible with any games at the moment. If you really want to use your DualSense controller with these games, then I would suggest using a cable. The cable works 90% of the time with these games because uh, Windows just recognizes the controller as a generic controller and it just uses it with all the games. So. Mileage does vary a lot with Bluetooth, so that is the main disadvantage when it comes to it. You can't use it with all the different games, mainly only Steam games actually work. So, when you're done using your DualSense controller on your PC, you might actually want to reconnect it to your PlayStation 5 if you haven't been able to find one. So lastly, I'm just going to show you how to reconnect your controller to your PlayStation 5. So, once again, the process is very similar to on the PlayStation 4. So if you've seen that, it's basically the same thing. Firstly, we need to disconnect our controller from our PC. So let's go back to our settings, to the same screen we were on before, devices, Bluetooth devices, and our controller should show up in mouse, keyboard, and pen. Just select it and remove the device. Yes, we are sure. And once it has been disconnected, we can now reconnect it to our PlayStation 5. We're going to have to use a USB-C cable to reconnect it, so it doesn't matter if it's the cable that came with the PlayStation 4 or a different USB-C cable. As long as it allows for a data pass-through, it will reconnect. So just connect the USB-C end into the controller and the USB-A end into the PlayStation 5, and then turn on your PlayStation 5 console. So then on our console, all we need to do is just press the PlayStation button and we can log in as we normally would. And it is just as simple as that. Now keep in mind, if you want to reconnect your controller to your PC, you're going to have to do the same process over again. You're going to put the PlayStation controller into pairing mode and add it again and set up everything just as before. So yeah, Bluetooth can be a bit of a pain, but you don't have to worry about having a cable plugged into your computer or into your controller. So that is also very nice. So it really depends on your personal preference as to which method you want to use. Both of them are uh, pretty easy in my opinion, so it's really up to you. So if you have any questions about this tutorial, leave them down in the comments down below. If uh, you would like to see future tutorials on the PlayStation 5, I will be able to make those now because I have a PlayStation 5. If you don't have a PlayStation 5, good luck. It is uh, a wild time. So uh, best wishes to you. Hopefully you can get one as soon as possible because uh, these things are still hard to find. So any recommendations for future videos, leave them down below. And that should do it. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I've been Steven, your semi-comprehensive guide. And be sure to have a wonderful rest of your day.